Hello everyone, hope you all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about deployment workflow and how it can help you migrate from current HIPS solution to attack surface reduction rules. Now, if you're watching this series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about attack surface reduction rules, deployment methods and modes which are available. Now let's talk about the deployment model of attack surface reduction rules and how this strategy can help you migrate from current HIPS solution to attack surface reduction rules. Before we begin, there is a very important point that I have to make and that is attack surface reduction rule is currently only available for Windows as a platform. So if you have other flavors of operating system running in your environment, that could be Linux or Mac, and you have implemented HIPS capabilities for other OS as well. You may have to consider some of the other alternatives to make sure every platform is secured. Let's begin. The first step is to identify the applications which your users are using. Now, depending upon the behavior of the applications running on the endpoint, attack surface reduction rules will be triggered. Now, if you already know all the set of applications that are running in your environment, as well as how they behave, what are the files they access? Nothing like it, you are at the right place to get started because you have already done the initial set of awareness part. But let's say if you don't know what are the applications that are getting used or you want to initiate the initial discovery, then my recommendation would be using a shadow IT discovery tool. Now, for all obvious reasons, Shadow IT tool will not let you know about the behavior of the application, but for sure it can give you an insight that how many users are using a specific application altogether. Now, this can be done from any Shadow IT tool that you use. You may be having a proxy uh, solution that is giving you this insight, but when it comes to Microsoft suite of services, the tool that will help you with this information is Microsoft Defender for cloud applications. Once you have the inventory of all the application, the next step is to target business units. For example, assume there is an application that is currently being used by HR, IT sales and finance team. But now, what if this application stops working because of attack surface reduction rules adoption? In this case, the team which can impact your business the most will be finance. Hypothetically, assume this situation, okay? So in this case, you may want to consider or you may want to choose IT, sales and HR for initial deployment. And once everything is in place, once you know the right set of behavior, then you can get this deployment rolled out or go wide. It all depends upon your business use case, but this was just an example to make you understand why it is important to choose the right business units for initial deployments. The next step is to define the scope of the devices and then making sure that the supported operating system are installed on these devices. For example, you may not want to target the high valued asset first. What do I mean by this? That you can have servers, and you also have endpoints. But for initial deployments, you may not want to target servers so that there could be any loss or let's say any productivity impact, right? Now, once you have decided which assets or which servers or which endpoints you're going to target, then just make sure that they are running the operating system, which is supported by attack surface reduction rules. The next step is to identify the set of rules that you want to deploy. And as we know, there are 16 attack surface reduction rules currently available. However, three rules are known as standard protection rules because implementing these rules will have minimal or least impact in users' productivity. So in an ideal scenario, your deployment must contain a combination of standard protection rules combined with some other rules that you want to deploy. In my opinion and my recommendation is that if you're testing this behavior of attack surface reduction rules, enable all the rules in audit mode. Now, since you have decided which attack surface reduction rules you're going to deploy, the next step is to choose the mode and then select mode specific rule deployment. Now, what do I mean by this? That let's say there are a couple of rules which you want to enable in audit mode, but then 
there are certain rules wherein you want to be protected from day one itself. So in this case, for some of the rules, you can choose audit mode and the other one, you can enable them in let's say block or ward mode. Before enabling rules in block or ward mode, please review the ASR recommendation section to check the user impact. This is something which I have covered in a lot more detail in our last video. Then the next step is to define ring models. The rules for which you are not getting any false positives, start moving them to block mode. And then the rules for which you are getting false positive, refine exclusions. Now exclusion is something which I will be covering in a lot more detail in our implementation video, wherein I will be letting you know how you can enable a tax surface reduction with the help of either PowerShell, GPO or Intune. So make sure you watch those videos as well. The next step is to go ahead and monitor alerts and then based on the analysis and refinements target to move all the rules into the block state. Now, once you have reached this stage where all the rules are working in block mode, you can plan to remove current HIPS solution. For best outcomes, I would recommend you to run HIPS solution with attack surface reduction rules parallelly so that you can evaluate which feature is giving you more insights, whether implementing attack surface reduction rules is not something that is going to compromise your current security level. Okay, so you already have a HIPS solution in place, but then you're migrating to a different solution or a different solution type, right? But then the agenda is to make sure everything remains secure or at least the security intensity should be improved. It should not be downgraded. Now, please note that for each rule, there are dedicated deployment platform and notification requirement. And it's my recommendation to please watch the entire series of 16 videos related to each attack surface reduction rules and then get started with your deployment planning. The link for these videos will be available in the description section. Now, let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video. We have discussed about deployment stages or the deployment workflow that you can follow to migrate from current HIPS solution to attack surface reduction rules. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to implement attack surface reduction rules with PowerShell. But before that, it's my sincere request that you go ahead and watch the entire series that I have created for all the rules. And they are dedicated 16 different videos, short videos that will give you an idea about what is the purpose of each rule and what all problem a rule covers, okay? So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much, thanks for your time.